This meeting is now being recorded. Hello, my name is Christine Ullum, and thank you for this opportunity to present my capstone proposal, Emotional Intelligence Among Faculty in Pre-Licensure Nursing Programs. I would first like to introduce my capstone chair, Dr. Judy Burkhart, and committee member, Dr. Ramona Yaley, and say thank you for their assistance in this capstone proposal and preparation. Their guidance, calm demeanor, and ongoing encouragement has made this a very pleasant learning experience. Industrial and corporate companies have widely adopted emotional intelligence skills, whereas healthcare has been less likely to include emotional intelligence skills in educational preparation. Most nursing educational programs do not incorporate emotional intelligence into the nursing curriculum. Value is placed on physiological and pharmaceutical concepts, whereas the interpersonal skills get lesser attention. Nurses need education on the cognitive, psychomotor, and effective skills of nursing to provide quality care. Nursing faculty and students need to understand the importance of the emotional intelligence as one cannot perform safe, quality care with just cognitive and psychomotor skills. So why is the inclusion of emotional intelligence in the nursing curriculum necessary? Implementing emotional intelligence in the nursing curriculum has both academic and non-academic implications. Research has shown emotional intelligence has a positive effect on interpersonal relationships, collaboration, leadership styles, patient outcomes, academic success, and job satisfaction. Increasing the student's emotional intelligence may help students develop better stress coping strategies for the rigorous academic demands of nursing education and in non-academic stressful situations. Students with higher emotional intelligence are more likely to have better time management and organizational skills. Understanding one's emotions can lead one to understand the decisions one makes. There are three main models for emotional intelligence that exist, all which differ in the conceptual definition of emotional intelligence. In 1980, Baron related emotional intelligence to personality characteristics. Solovia and Mayer in 1990 defined emotional intelligence as the ability to monitor one's and others' feelings and emotions, to discriminate among them, and to use this information to guide one's thinking and actions. Daniel Goleman defined emotional intelligence as a person's potential to develop and master the skills of self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. Research has shown emotional intelligence is a factor to improve academic and social outcomes, such as school attrition, student satisfaction, peer relationships, and health. High emotional intelligence helps to reduce risky behaviors, such as dropouts, drug use, and violence, while increasing pro-social behaviors like positive peer relationships and emotional intelligence leadership. Emotional intelligence affects not only the individual, but also others that surround the individual. The purpose of the study is to evaluate the emotional intelligence of nursing faculty employed at community colleges before and after an educational intervention. Research has shown a high relationship between emotional intelligence and teacher effectiveness. Teaching to others involves more than just the subject matter expertise, but also emotional intelligence. To be an effective teacher, one must have interpersonal skills for interaction and communication. An effective teacher can lead to success in the classroom as the learning needs of the students are being met. Emotional intelligence can be learned. While research has been substantial in the outcomes of emotional intelligence, what is lacking in the research is abilities of teachers regarding emotional intelligence. Do teachers have the knowledge of emotional intelligence and the ability to use it in the classroom and educate about emotional intelligence? If teachers do not have high emotional intelligence, then the quality of teaching will be poor and ineffective. Without the knowledge of emotional intelligence and emotional intelligence abilities, faculty cannot teach students about it. The design of this project will be a quantitative, quasi-experimental, one group, pre-test, post-test design. With this type of design, the sample is pre-tested on the dependent variable and then post-tested after the intervention. 
The faculty will be given the Shuti Self-Report Emotional Intelligence Test, also known as the SSEIT, which consists of 33 items. It should take approximately 10 minutes to answer the items. The faculty will then be asked to complete emotional intelligence training via a Google Docs website. Within four weeks after the training, the faculty will be asked to complete the same emotional intelligence test given as a pretest. The means of the scores from the emotional intelligence test will be analyzed to determine if there is a statistically significant difference. The research question for this study is, does an educational intervention change the emotional intelligence of pre-licensure nursing faculty? For the purpose of this capstone project, Solovia and Mayer's original model for emotional intelligence will be used. Solovia and Mayer suggests that emotional intelligence is categorized into four areas, appraising emotion, perceiving emotion, regulation of emotions, and utilizing emotions. Appraising emotions is defined as perceiving his or her own emotions with accuracy and responding more appropriately to their feelings and the ability to express oneself better. Perceiving emotions is defined as having the ability to recognize others' emotional reactions. Regulating emotions is defined as the ability to manage one's emotions, which can then enhance their mood and moods of others. Utilizing emotions is defined as individuals with emotional intelligence having more flexibility and creativity in developing alternatives to problems. This is a diagram of Solovi and Mayer's original model for emotional intelligence. Solovi and Mayer's model can be linked to the Shuti Self-Report Emotional Intelligence Test, which is color-coded for the various items. Research suggests a four-factor solution for the 33 items in the SSEIT. The four factors are perception of emotions, managing of emotions in the self, managing others' emotions, and utilizing emotions. Questions 5, 9, 15, 18, 19, 22, 25, 29, and 32 from the SSEIT are all related to appraisal and expression of emotion and is highlighted blue. Questions 1, 4, 11, 13, 16, 24, 26, and 30 from the SSEIT are all related to regulation of emotion in others and is highlighted green. Questions 2, 3, 10, 12, 14, 21, 23, 28, and 31 from the SSEIT are all related to regulation of emotion in the self and is highlighted yellow. Questions 6, 7, 8, 17, 20, and 27 from the SSEIT are all related to utilization of emotion and is highlighted red. Content about emotional intelligence is lacking in nursing curricula because the focus in nursing is on the psychomotor skills rather than interpersonal skills. Academic success is multifactorial with cognitive or non-cognitive factors that can contribute. One of those non-cognitive factors is emotional intelligence. Fernandez, Sol Mollison, and Griffiths in 2012 conducted a study to examine the association between emotional intelligence and academic performance among first-year accelerated graduate entry nursing students, which demonstrated a significant positive correlation. Inclusion of emotional intelligence in the curriculum can maximize learning. Learning occurs with emotionally engaged students. Academic performance has been positively correlated when emotional intelligence was included in the curriculum. According to a study by Romanelli, Kane, and Smith in 2006, students with higher emotional intelligence are more likely to have better time management and organizational skills. Emotionally self-aware nurses can enrich nurse-patient relationships, therefore improving patient satisfaction. Nurses need emotional skills to maintain interpersonal relationships. Establishing therapeutic communication is a foundation for all healthcare professions. Emotion management is necessary for successful interactions so that healthcare providers demonstrate an understanding of their patients.
Highly emotional intelligent nurses seek collaborative solutions when conflict arises. Therefore, patient care can be more effective and efficient. One can use emotional intelligence to adaptively solve problems. When faced with alternatives, the inclusion of emotional intelligence may lead one to favor a decision over another. Lack of communication can be an issue in conflict. Communication can be hindered if one lacks interpersonal skills or one is unapproachable. If one can learn how to handle conflict in a productive style, one can enhance teamwork. Emotional intelligence and technical skills are both needed to work effectively as a team to provide care to patients and families. There is a positive correlation between emotional intelligence and transformational nursing leadership. Research findings show transformational leaders with high emotional intelligence are able to find a work-life balance for themselves, which then has a positive impact on the job performance, job satisfaction, and emotional intelligence of followers. Emotionally intelligent leaders impact others around them. An emotionally intelligent leader is able to demonstrate self-confidence, earn respect from others, gain trust, and take into consideration the needs of others. Individuals who are able to manage their emotions have better and more effective communication. This translates into healthy work environments. Emotionally intelligent leaders foster healthy work environments. The project is a quasi-experimental, quantitative, one-group pre-test, post-test. The one-group design is used as it is not possible to recruit a control group. Without a control group, a positive outcome would merely suggest an effect for the experimental treatment. The data will be collected by the participants before and after an intervention. A quantitative design was chosen as the aim of quantitative research is to generate principles that describe and predict phenomena of interest and to be able to generalize. Variables in the study are age, gender, ethnicity, number of years employed as a faculty member, number of years experience as a registered nurse, and emotional intelligence scores. The dependent variable is the emotional intelligence scale scores, and the independent variable is group measurement time, pre or post intervention. In order to recruit the faculty, an email invitation will be sent out to all potential participants with a link to the emotional intelligence test, which will be converted to a survey on Google Docs. In the email, there will be a paragraph explaining they are getting consent once they access the survey. The email will also explain that the faculty will be conducting surveys on two separate occasions, before and after emotional intelligence training. Reminder emails will be sent to faculty one week after the initial email invitation. Faculty who complete the emotional intelligence test will indicate consent to participate in the capstone project. The faculty will be given the Shuti Self-Report Emotional Intelligence Test, which written permission has been obtained from Dr. Nicola Shuti to use the tool for this project. Participants in the study will be given the link to the Google site. Faculty will then be asked to complete emotional intelligence training. The emotional intelligence training will consist of resources available through a web-based Google site, which will consist also, too, of a 30-minute PowerPoint presentation to educate the faculty on what emotional intelligence is, why it is important, and how emotional intelligence can be taught and or increased. As this will be web-based, there will not be a need for login information. Within four weeks of the training, the faculty will be asked to complete the same emotional intelligence test that was given as a pretest. The mean of the scores from the pre- and post-test of the emotional intelligence test will be analyzed using SPSS to determine if there is a statistically significant difference in the post-test scores from the pre-test scores. Permission has already been obtained via email and on a letterhead from the participating schools that the researcher may have access to the faculty for this capstone project. The possible sample size is 225 faculty. Deans of the schools will help to facilitate by providing the email addresses of the identified faculty. There is no reporting relationship to the faculty at the participating schools. Based on the power analysis with a medium effect size of 0.5 and an alpha probability of 0.05, a power of 0.80, 
the total sample size needed will be 27. The alpha probability means that there is a 5% chance of making a type 1 error. A type 1 error means that the data is representative of one population and not another when the data represents the latter. The power is set at 0 0.80, which means there is an 80% chance out of 100 of finding a relationship when there is one. A one-tail test was chosen to test the, the possibility of a relationship in one direction and completely disregarding the possibility of a relationship in the other direction. The one-tail test provides more power to detect an effect in one direction by not testing the effect in the other direction. The instrument that will be used to answer the research question is the Shuti Self-Report Emotional Intelligence Test. This instrument was chosen over others because of its ease of use and because of the factor loading of the SSEIT to the Solovi and Mayer Emotional Intelligence Model. The SSEIT is a 33-item self-report using a Likert scale from 1, which means strongly disagree, to 5, which means strongly agree, for responses. To figure the total scale score, the items are calculated by reverse coding items 5, 28, and 33 and then the items are summed together. The total score can range from 33 to 165. The higher the score, the more emotional intelligence one possesses. The psychometric properties of the scale have been published in the initial article about the scale development and in subsequent studies. Internal consistency as measured by Chromebox Alpha was 0 0.90. The SSEIT has also demonstrated internal consistency in other studies with a means Chromebox alpha of 0 0.87. Reliability and validity has been established for this instrument. The two-week test-retest reliability for this instrument was 0 0.78. Discriminant and predictive validity have been established. The population will be a sample of convenience of pre-licensure nursing faculty teaching at community colleges located in the Midwest. As the sample is not randomized, the results may not be applied to a larger population and only suggested. There is also the chance a sampling procedure may not produce the best representative sample. Selection bias should also be taken into account as the results may not be able to be generalized. As this project involves using a survey, non-response bias may be an issue. To address this, a wave analysis will be completed where the researcher will examine individual items week by week to determine if the average responses change. Comparing responses from late responders may assist in identifying non-response bias by identifying differences. Once IRB approval is obtained from all organizations, an email containing a cover letter discussing the project and consent, along with an embedded link to the emotional intelligence test in a Google Docs form, will be sent to all potential participants. A follow-up reminder email will be sent to all participants within one week of the initial email. Google Docs surveys do not collect Internet Protocol IP addresses, so all respondents will remain anonymous. Respondents will choose a unique four-digit ID to place on the pretest and post-test to link the two surveys to a single respondent. A timestamp of when the survey is completed will be available. It will be recommended to the respondents to complete the survey on a public computer or to delete cookies on their personal computer to prevent any tracking by Google. So the procedure for this study will include completing the SSEIT pretest viewing a 30-minute educational session via a Google Docs website, and then completing the SSEIT post-test, which the participants will have up to four weeks to complete. Collected data will automatically transfer to an Excel spreadsheet from Google Docs. The data will be encrypted using AxCrypt, and a password will be needed to access the file. The password will be chosen by the researcher and not written down or shared with anyone to ensure confidentiality. The data will be kept on a personal computer that is also password protected and will be locked in a file cabinet in the researcher's home office. The data will be kept for five years, after which all electronic data 
will be deleted from the personal computer using the AxCrypt software. The statistical package for social sciences, also known as SPSS, will be used to analyze the data. A codebook will be created that will convert the information obtained from the survey into a format the SPS program can understand. Responses will be assigned a numerical code for each variable. In the study, a paired samples t-test will be used to evaluate the impact of emotional intelligence training on the nursing faculty's emotional intelligence scores. A paired samples t-test is used when there is one group and the data is collected on two different occasions under two different conditions. When interpreting the results from the paired samples t-test, the overall significance will be determined. Once a significance difference is established, the mean values will be compared. The mean values will be evaluated to see if the time frame of viewing the emotional intelligence training has any relationship to the post-test emotional intelligence scores. Descriptive statistics will be used. Descriptive statistics can only describe the data collected and not make predictions. The categorical variables will be measured using frequencies and proportions. The continuous variables will be measured using mean, median, and standard deviation. Skewness and kurtosis will also be measured. It will be important to maintain confidentiality of the survey respondents by ensuring those that complete the survey that the survey cannot be traced back to them. The IP addresses are not collected by Google Docs. Also, the participants would need to understand that beginning the survey is implied consent, and once they submit their answers, the answers cannot be changed. All patients, sorry, all participants have a right to privacy, so the data must be secured. The following is a timeline for this capstone project. The week of May 25th, the capstone proposal defense and submission of the IRB application. For the week of June 1st, the IRB application from American Sentinel University will be sent to participating colleges, and once approval has been obtained, data collection will begin in the first half of June. Data will be collected for the rest of the month, and then data analysis will occur in July. In August, chapters four and five will be completed, then the final defense will be scheduled in September or October. In summary, emotional intelligence affects more than just academics. The knowledge of emotional intelligence has non-academic implications that would benefit not just the individual, but society. Inadequate inclusion of emotional intelligence in pre-licensure nursing programs may lead to a decreased ability to function with an interdisciplinary and collaborative team, therefore jeopardizing quality patient care, staff retention, and job satisfaction. Prior to inclusion of emotional intelligence in a nursing curriculum, the emotional intelligence needs of the faculty need addressed. One cannot begin by teaching emotional intelligence to students without having the knowledge of what emotional intelligence is. The following slides are the references used in my presentation. Thank you for viewing my presentation.